Okay, in this presentation we are going to carry out some exploratory data analysis on five variables x1 to x2, x3, all the way up to x5. Okay, now, so what we're using here is a thing called Minitab, and we have two outputs from Minitab. So the first thing we're going to look at, not that it's in any particular order, is the normal probability plot, also known as the QQ plot, okay? So the normal probability plot, okay, the QQ plot. Now, in this case, essentially what we see here is that the points follow the line, okay? So you will get the odd outlier here, like this one and this one, but for the most part, the dots there, the blue dots, follow the line, okay? So in that case, it's all, there are just, uh, with the exception of the outliers, so in this case, we sort of so, uh, assume normality, okay? Uh, this would indicate a uh, normal distribution okay, of the variable x1, okay? Now, up here we have some information, like for example the Anderson-Darling test and the mean and standard deviation, but we're going to look at the summary report here. So essentially, as far as this plot is concerned, QQ plot, normal or not normal, if the dots follow the line, then it's normally distributed. So we're going to conclude this is normally normally distributed data. Okay, so let's look at the counterpart plot here. This is the summary uh, report of X1, and this is also produced by Minitab. So there's a couple of things we're looking at here. Okay, first off, the histogram is it skewed or symmetric? Now I think that histogram there is symmetric. Okay, little bit of skew, but that's going to happen. Essentially, um, we, what we seem to have here is an outlier down here. Now let's just look at the histogram first off, okay? So just down here we seem to have an outlier or something like that, okay? But overall the histogram is symmetric, okay? Now, uh, secondly what I'm going to do here is look at the bell curve. Now essentially if this bell curve is superimposed over, I'll actually let's do that in red actually because it's just a little bit easier to read. This bell curve here is superimposed over the histogram, okay? So if this is centered, that's a good sign that the data is symmetric, okay? Or if the if if, it's, if the the histogram matches the bell curve more or less, and the bell curve is sort of centered right in the middle, then we would sort of say symmetric and normally distributed. Now it's not exactly symmetric; it's not exactly centered here. If you get if you get me, so this bit down here looking at the bell curve, this bit down here doesn't exactly match up with that bit up there. It's not enough to sort of, it's not enough to disqualify it, it's just essentially an outlier. So I'm going to move down a bit now, and again, let's actually look at the, the actual box plot underneath. And if we look at the box plot, I'll just amplify it up there, we have two outliers, okay? So definitely have some outliers. So that sort of corroborates what we sort of thought earlier on with the histogram, that we have some outliers, okay? Now, but apart from that, the apart from that, the data seems to be symmetric, okay? Cuz the I mean, it's it's not unsymmetric basically. It's not it's not heavily skewed. So it's got it's more or less symmetric with just a little a few outliers. Now, this um is the the graphic underneath here. Is I'm going to see if I can blow this up a bit is the not my much is this down here this is the, the confidence intervals so it's the plot of the confidence intervals now essentially what we have here are the point estimates okay now the key tell is are they overlapping each other's point estimates so does this confidence interval here that's a graphical representation of a confidence interval is this overlapping the other point estimate? Yes, it is. And does that work for both cases? So if both overlap, then we would sort of uh, go symmetric. So, so far, everything seems to be symmetric at the moment. Okay, I'm just going to sort of tuck this into the one side there. Okay. Now, let's go back up here. So essentially what we're going to have a look now is at the mean and the standard de uh, mean and median. So for this data set, mean is, and uh, let's just pick it out there, uh, 
0.603. The median is 51.651. They're close to enough to each other, okay? So if you consider that the main range of values here is between 30 and 70, okay? Most of our data is between 30 and 70. That's not much of a difference. Like, no, no, no real difference. Okay, no significant difference between the mean and the median. So that indicates, oops, that indicates symmetry also. That so the reinforces symmetry once more. Okay. Now, we're going to look at this here, the Anderson-Darling test. This is the last part there. Okay. The Anderson-Darling test. The p-value there is 0.376, okay, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. There, there it is again. We fail to reject the null hypothesis that the data is normally distributed. So this is the Anderson-Darling test. Uh, so not, we don't have a significant p-value, fail to reject the null hypothesis. So I'll actually just come back to that. I'll, like, I'll formally state the Anderson-Darling test later on, but essentially what we're doing here is like picking out large or small p-values, and I'll just sum up on that later on. So overall our general conclusion for X1 is symmetric. Symmetric. X1 is symmetric and it's normally distributed. Okay. Now there's a couple of other things we can tell here. Uh, for example the mean and the median and so on. They're all down here. They're interesting enough Okay, but I mean, it's really just, it's not really a matter of interpretation there. It's actually a matter of just picking it out and reading it. Okay, so let's do another one here. Let's go down to X2. Oh, this is not normally distributed. Not, uh, not by any chance. See the dots there? They do not follow the line. Okay, or the line doesn't follow the dots. So, not normal. Okay. Okay, so over here we have the Anderson-Darling test. That's a low p-value, which is to say significant, which is to say not normal. Well, actually, really, we're saying there is that we have enough evidence to say that the data is not normally distributed. We reject the null hypothesis that it is normally distributed. Okay, so that's the Anderson-Darling test in the QQ plot. Now, uh, just the histogram alone skewed okay you can sort of see really um up against the left hand side and also this here this bell curve here that's also skewed again that's not centered at all so skewed and skewed okay skewness there okay and our box plot underneath okay it seems to be very skewed towards the left hand side okay and look at all these outliers here okay loads of them okay so that, that's skewness as well skewed okay that's not how you spell skewed that's how you spell skewed the overlap do we have overlap no we do not okay this is the point estimate there it's not covered by the other confidence intervals not overlapped by the other confidence interval neither of them are okay um now considering our range of data is 0 to 3 roughly really actually 0 to 2.4 okay Let's go for 2.4. That's our range of data. Okay. The median, well, the most of our data, is 0 0.509. The mean is just above it, not 0.731. They're not particularly close together. Okay. They're not equal to each other. Even just a little bit of, yeah, they're miles apart. Not miles apart, but uh, you have to sort of uh, judge that over the range of data. So it's if it, if it's more than one or two percent away from each other over the overall range, then they're not equal. To, they're not. They're significantly different. Okay. X three. So the X two is not normal. That's our overall conclusion for X two. It is skewed. It is not normally distributed. Uh, the median in this case is the correct measure of centrality to use and if you're using the median you use the interquartile range anyway x2 is not normally distributed so let's move on here x3 i'm going to go through this very quickly normal dots follow the line okay 
p-value is uh, large, that means not significant, fail to reject the null hypothesis. So in both cases so far, normal. Okay. Okay, so normal and normal. Okay, let's go down to this. Yeah, uh, symmetric. Okay, more or less the bell curve, the histogram is symmetric and the bell curve is very symmetric. It's nicely bell curved and centered there. Okay, um, the histogram underneath, or sorry, the box plot underneath is symmetric. Okay, it's right nicely centered as well. We seem to have some outliers down here. Nothing to worry about really. We're going to get outliers. Okay, the these two point estimates are overlapped by the other, the complementary, the the other uh, confidence interval. Okay, so that's good. So uh, everything here seems to suggest symmetric. Okay. Now l let's look at this side here. Uh, median is four six one. Mean is four six zero. Four six zero more or less equal to four six one. Yes, I think so. So, the mean and median, 460 and 461. Again, we have to consider the range of data is 360 to 560. Okay, so you have to bring the factor that in. 360 to 560 is essentially our range of values. Over a range of 200, okay, a difference of one is negligible, okay. So, anyway, general conclusion, symmetric and normal. That's for X3. I'm going to skip X4 because, really, it's almost the exact same. We, ha It's a little bit more of a challenge here because you can see to detect some skewness here. Okay. And also, the mean and median are not exactly as close. So, it's a sort of... We don't... It's a sort of... It's a bit more in terms of the alarm bells are ringing but not enough to sort of, still overall, uh, the main marks are hit, basically. So essentially it's just really the case of one big outlier is causing a lot of trouble. But apart from that, uh, no major uh, hassle, really. Now, the last one, X5. Now this one really is get you on your, really put you on your paces. See what we have here, this is X5, okay. So, I mean, apart from that last one up here, they do, it does seem to, like, that red line, that it just gives the overall general direction, doesn't it? It's not enough. They have to follow the trend line. This sort of jagging effect, or jigsaw, or zigzag effect, not, not, enough, not good enough. Not normal is what we're going with here. Not normal. Okay, and also you'd be able to tell with the p-value being very, very low, very uh, highly significant. Okay, so not normal. Okay, it's not enough that they follow the trend line. It's actually had they actually like overall in general they actually have to really follow it. Like uh, just to sort of go back here, like that. They have to follow it like that, not like that. Okay, let's look at everything else here. Oh, I look at all these box plot outliers. Loads of them. Yeah, millions of them. Okay, now you can detect skewness here. Okay, skewed data. Now, the confidence intervals. So this is our point estimate, and it's covered by the other confidence interval. Where is the this point estimate? It's down here. Okay, it's not covered by the other confidence interval. So that indicates skewness as well. Skewed data or skewness. The mean median is three. The mean is two point six. So it's a bit of a judgment call. Is is 2.6? Uh, that's a difference of about 0 0.4. But our main range of data here is 0 to 6. So 0 0.4 over 6 is that a noticeable difference? I think so. So essentially, um, not normal. Okay, skewed, not normal. Okay. Now what would happen here actually if a little bit of a, uh, you know if you got good at this you might sort of see. Is this discrete data? And that's actually what you know what you should be sort of might be able to pick out there later on when you get good at this. Okay. So that's exploratory data analysis.
Come on, genie. 